Hello and welcome back to the YouTube channel of Kendra Engineering College. In today's video session, we'll be discussing regarding counter for other sequences. To recall back what we have studied during all these video sessions or what we have studied during all these particular modules, is, we have checked out what are counters, what are the different types of counters, what ways the different types of counters function, what are the counters made up of, and what are the basic what are the basic building blocks of the counter and we have seen regarding up counter down counter the design of up and down counter we have studied also something called as up down counter and we have also checked regarding loadable counters in today's video session we'll check regarding counter for other sequences so what actually you mean by other sequences so we already know something called as counters counters are very familiar things to us right now so we have seen what are these counters what are the internal blocks of these counters we have seen how a counter will count so what input has to be given to the counter all these things are very known to us here the topic says counter for other sequences if this word other sequence had not come then probably i would have said that yes i know something regarding this particular topic so sequence as i said you it may be a sequence of counts which will be happening in the upward fashion or in the downward fashion but in case of this particular topic it has given us counter for other sequences so what actually you mean by counter for other sequences for example let us say that you have a counter which will be counting like this first number will be 0 second one will be 3 next will be 6 next will be 5 and next will be 7 and next will be 4 so if you check this numbers here or if you check the sequence of the count that is occurring in the counter you can see it is an irregular right the sequence here is irregular so the counter for other sequences all about a counter which can count the sequence which is irregular so that is what this particular topic or this particular title normally is all about so the sequence can go like this also this is not only the only sequence your sequence may be like this it may be 1 4 2 6 3 5 so a sequence which is going to occur in an abnormal fashion or which is not regular so this is what is called as other sequence so how do you actually design a counter which can count in an abnormal or in an irregular sequence so what we need to do here is first thing what i have to do is I just need to check what is the highest count that is occurring in the sequence. For example, if I take this particular sequence, I can say that 7 is the highest count that is happening in the sequence. Similarly, if I take this particular sequence here, 6 is the highest count what is happening in the sequence. So, based on the highest count that is occurring in the sequence, you are going to decide the number of flip flops. For example, if the highest count here is 7, then obviously I need to go with a counter which will be giving me a mod 8 counter. So I can say that I need to be deciding this depending on the count. So I need to be taking 3 flip flops. Very similarly if I look into this sequence, 6 is the highest number in the sequence. So similarly if I say 6, then even here I need to be taking a counter which will be designed using 3 flip flops. For example, let us say that it goes like this. zero. 2 and 3. For example, let us say this is the count or this is a sequence in which your counter is going to count. Here, 3 is the highest count. 3 is the highest count. When I say 3 is the highest count, I can go to a conclusion that I can design this counter using two flip flops. So, the number of flip flops for a counter which will be counting in other sequence depends on the highest count what your counter is going to count in that irregular sequence. This is the first thing what I need to know. After the flip flops are been decided, you just need to draw the state graph. You just need to draw the state graph. For example, check out here. Here, I'll take this example. First count is 0. Second count is 4. Third count is 7. Fourth count is 2. And last count is 3. So, this is the sequence in which your count is going, out of which 7 is the highest count. So, looking into the 7, I can say this particular counter can be designed using 3 
flip-flops. So I need to be taking three flip-flops. Once these three flip-flops are taken, you just need to draw the state diagram. State diagram is all about the sequence which is represented in the binary fashion. So this is your first count. This is your second count. This is the third count. This is the fourth count. And this is the fifth count. So this has to be written in the binary fashion. So 0 is represented as 0, 0, 0. 4 is represented as 1, 0, 0. 7 is represented as 1, 1, 1. 2 is represented as 0, 1, 0. And 3 is represented as 0, 1, 1 with the arrow mark. This arrow mark indicates in which direction the count is going. Whether the count is going from 0, 4, 7, 2, 3 uh, in this fashion. Or if you draw the arrow mark in the reverse fashion, then probably it will go from 0 to 3, from 3 to 2, from 2 to 7, from 7 to 4, and from 4 to 0, and again this way. So, when you are writing the state diagram, please remember that arrow marks carries a lot of importance. Your arrow marks has got a lot of importance when you are drawing the state diagram. Once the state diagram has been drawn, next thing what you need to do is, you just need to decide which flip-flop are you going to take, which flip-flop are you going to take. Let us say that for this design, I will take T flip-flop, I will take T flip-flop. So, once I decide the flip-flops, you should be pretty much clear that what is the excitation table or transition diagram or excitation table of your T flip-flop. So, I have taken T flip-flop. So, based on this T flip-flop, I will be writing the state table or state table that is given here. So, present state, we know that we have been writing this. So, I will be making three columns, present state, next state and flip-flop inputs. So, in the present state, there is nothing to worry about. In the present state, you need not worry about anything. So, you just go on writing the sequence as, uh, as such. It's as it is an up counter. You just go with the same sequence. First number is 0, second number is 1, next number is 2, next number is 3, next number is 4, next is 5, next is 6 and next is 7. So, first column, you write it as such. Okay? You don't have to worry. When you are writing the next state, just look into the state graph and check what should have come after 0, 0, 0. The next number that should come after 0, 0, 0 is 1, 0, 0. So, you write 1, 0, 0 here. So, what is the next number here? You are not going to copy the this one. See, remember, you are not going to copy this number here as it is a irregular sequence counter. So, next number is 0, 0, 1. Check, you have 0, 0, 1 here. Do you have 0, 0, 1 here? No, you don't have 0, 0, 1 here. As you don't have 0, 0, 1 here, the next count after 0, 0, 1 is unknown. I don't know what count should come. So, you just write it with, you can write it with X or you can write it with the dash. Nothing is going to happen here. Clear? So, after 1, it is 2, 0, 1, 0. So, you have 0, 1, 0 here. What's the next state here? 0, 1, 1. So, please write 0, 1, 1 here. What's the next count? 0, 1, 1. Isn't it? 0, 1, 1. Regular count. After 0, 1, 1, what is the count it has to show? It has to count 0. See, it is written here, 0, 0, 0. What is the next count? It is 1, 0, 0. See, here you have 1, 0, 0. What is the next, next is, uh, count it has to show? 1, 1, 1. So, 1, 1, 1 is written here, right? After that, what is the next count? It is 5. 5 is 1, 0, 1. Do you have 1, 0, 1 here? No, I do not have 1, 0, 1 here. As I do not have 1, 0, 1 here, the next state after 1, 0, 1 is not known. So, you can write it with a dash or X mark. After that, it is 6, which is represented as 1, 1, 0. Do you have 1, 1, 0 here? No, I do not have 1, 1, 0 here. As I do not have 1, 1, 0 here, the next state is unknown. So, I will write it with the dash. The next number, 7, 1, 1, 1. After 7, the next number is 0, 1, 0. So, it has been written here. After that, it is the same thing. So, for example, I will write the T flip-flop table. Okay, I will write the T flip-flop table. So, for T flip-flop, let us write this is T. This is Q and this is Q plus, okay. So, here this will be having 0, 0, 1, 1. So, this will be 0, 1, 0, 1. So, present, present state is 0, present state is 0 or let us write this is 0, this is 1, this is 0, this is 1. Let us say this I am going to fill up later. This I am going to fill up later, okay. 
So present state is 0, next state is 0. So what should be the input given? Input given should be 0. Present state is 1, next state should also be 1. So what should be the input given? It should be 0. Present state is 0, I want next state to be 1. When you want next state to be 1, you give the input as 1 here. Present state is 1, I want the next state to be 0. If you want the next state to be 0, you give the C input as 1. So this is my excitation table of a T flip flop. So whenever the input T is equal to 1, the present state will toggle, the present state will change. That is what this parallel table says. Now go on comparing. To compare, present state is 0, next state is 1. So what should be the input TC? Input TC should be 1. Present state is 0, next state is not known. Next state is not known. So you fill it up with X only here. Present state is 0, next state is 0. So what should be input? It is 0. Present state is 0, next state is 0. So what should be input? It is 0. Present state is 1, next state should also be 1, so it is 0. Present state is 1, next state is unknown, fill it up with x. Present state is 1, next state is 0, fill it up with 1. So that is how you compare C with C plus based on the state diagram and you fill up the table for TC. Similarly, you compare B with B plus and you fill up the table for TB because you know this, this table is known. You compare A with A plus and you fill up the table for TA. For example, check here. Present state is 1. Next state is not known. So, you fill it up with X only. Present state is 0. Next state is 1. So, if 0 has to change to 1, if 0 has to change to 1, then input should be 1. So that 1 you can see here. Very similar to that, you have got TC, TB and TA. So what next in the design part? Once TC, TB and TA are known, you just need to transfer this values into the K map. So let's take the K map. See the excitation table has been given here, which I don't want to explain again and again. So I have written the K map for TC, TB, and TA. So, as I said you, you just need to fill up. So, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. Going on to the truth table, I mean K map, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So, based on the values what you have here, you just fill it up in the K map. So once I fill it up into the K map, once I fill it up into the K map, I get two pairs here, and the terms corresponding to the pairs are C dash B dash plus C B. So here it is C dash, and here it is B dash. For this, it is C dash B dash. Terms corresponding to this is C, and it is B here. Very similarly, you write the K map for TB. So, you get two more pairs here and the terms corresponding to those particular pairs here are C dash A plus C B dash. So, I am not going to explain this again because K map is known to you people. Very similarly, this table that is this value what I have for TA, the value what I have here for TA, this has been transferred into a K map. So, once transferred into the K map, I get two quads here. So, this is one quad. And this one is the other quad. And the term corresponding to TA is C plus B. What is the next work? You need to transfer this equations or you need to implement this equations in the form of a circuit diagram, isn't it? So, taking them to a form of the circuit diagram, you can check out here. As I said you, the highest count what is happening here is 7. So, if it is 7, I need to take 3 flip flops. So, I have taken 3 flip flops. Flip flop C, flip flop B and flip flop A and you need to have one common clock input, one common clock input. So the clock input is taken and it is connected and later you go with the equation for TA. TA is nothing but C plus B. So C is the output of flip flop C, B is the output of flip flop C, I mean flip flop B. So C is taken and it is connected to an OR gate, B is taken and it is connected to an OR gate, 
and this is going to give C plus B. Similarly, if I speak with respect to TB, TB is C dash B dash plus what was the term I have? Sorry, this is not C dash B dash, this is C dash A plus C B dash. So, C dash, so this is C dash. So, you take a wire from there and you connect it to one gate. A, where do I get A? A is here. So, you take A and give it to an AND gate. So, this will give you C dash A. Similarly, here you will get C B dash. Both are given to an OR gate which gives you C B dash plus C dash A. The last term is, the last term here is C dash B dash plus C B. So, you take C dash from here, B dash from here, give it to an AND gate. So, this is C dash B dash and this will be C B. When I give it to an OR gate, this gives me C dash B dash plus C B. So, this is how you design the counter for other sequence. So, whatever I have taken right now is an example. What you people can do is you can take any sequence or they might ask you design a synchronous counter for the sequence given here. So, they might give 0, 6, 3, 5, 4, 8 or maybe 7, sorry, maybe 7. So, when they give a sequence like this, you just need to remember this is an irregular counter. This is an irregular counter. The counter is not regular here. Once you decide it is an irregular counter, you just check what is the highest count. So, based on this highest count, you decide how many flip-flops I need to take. Once you decide the flip-flops, what you need to take, you check what flip-flops are you going to take. Whether it is T flip-flop or D flip-flop. Whether they have specified the design should go with D flip-flop or T flip-flop or it is a general one. Once that has been decided, you try to know the excitation table of the flip-flop because the excitation table plays a very important role in filling up the table. Once this excitation table is known, please write the state table. Once the state table is known, you just write a table for the present state, next state and the flip-flop inputs. After the flip-flop inputs are written, you just draw the K-map. So, once the K-map is written, you get equations. Once the equations are known, you implement them in the form of the circuit. And the circuit, whatever you implement, will be the circuit of an or the circuit what you have designed for an irregular counter. So, this is how normally a counter for other sequence goes on. So, normally if they ask you a question, they will give you the sequence. They will give you a sequence. They will tell this is a sequence in which I want my count to be going. So, based on the sequence what they are given, you will decide all the parameters that are essential for the design of a irregular counter. So, this is how it is to be done in general. Thank you.